I'll be man enough to admit there's certain buildings that I was very uncomfortable going in. The Witt House was the one that myself, one of the guys who still works there, a buddy of mine is now with Newport News PD, we're in there one night. It was slow. Summertime, decided to do some ghost hunting of our own. On the second floor, we heard the air conditioning unit kick on. A couple minutes later, we heard down on the floor below us a lady singing. And she was just as happy as could be. I wish I could tell you what she was singing. We don't know, but she had a beautiful voice, very melodic. We're up there, and we stood there for about two to three minutes listening to her sing. And then slowly faded out. And it wasn't scary. That one was actually kind of peaceful and as crazy as it may sound. But it would have probably been scary if it had only been if I'd been there by myself. But with three other, two other people there, three of us total. It was actually pretty neat. I have had times where I could not get into the building. Literally could not get the door to open. I called my one lieutenant up one night there. I showed him what key turned, not opening. He goes, let me try, boom, door pops right open for him. He's had experiences in there too. The Witt House, the only one that I can share with you that I was there firsthand on, and I have no explanation for what happened. The employees came into work that morning. They accessed their break room through the lower bulkhead door into a basement area. As far as when they enter the rest of the building, they have to do it through one of the main doors upstairs on the back side, which is their primary entrance. The front door always has a piece of wood across it for whatever reason, the way it was designed. The doors are very secure. It's just like that extra piece of security, I guess, they had back in the day. The doors are locked going downstairs, so if somebody were dumb enough to try to break into that building and get to the basement, as far as they're going to get to the basement, they're not going to be able to get in the rest of the house. One, the locks they had back then are better than some nowadays. Two, there's a thumb bolt lock at the bottom, push across, and you're not going to kick those doors. You're not going to break them open. Well, that one particular Sunday morning, they could not get in the back door of the house. We tried everything to get in. The door was locked. Call a buddy of ours from maintenance, having me working that day. He came up there and he goes, There's nothing wrong with the door. He goes, But I don't know why it's not able to be open. Well, when I left him there, he was getting ready to, he knew a window because what he told me later, and I couldn't stick around then to find out the whole story because near the end of our shift, he had had one time to him about 30 years prior. He goes, I knew which window I could get, pop the pin out, and access. He said, I went in there, he goes, and the same thing had happened that day that happened 30 years earlier. And I said, and that was, he goes, the door on the inside, the main entry door was not only locked, the thumb bolt had been engaged. Now, these thumb bolts are not going to accidentally engage when you close the door. They're tight enough on the tension that they have to give a little force to push into it. It's another form like a dead bolt lock nowadays. The door leading downstairs was completely locked. Thumb bolt engaged is normal. The main entry door had been locked with the thumb bolt engaged. The problem is that's the door at nighttime when they lock the building up that they exit. And there's no way you can push that thumb bolt from the outside. It can only be done from the inside. And again, it was checked. It was working properly. There was no malfunction and there was no physical way when you close that door for that thumb bolt to slide over.